Shalom. Kahlaimla Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Kankadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. And double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. <coughs> Coming back at you with another lesson. Reading the Bible from a spiritual lens. So it's very easy, it's very easy to get caught up in our feelings and emotions when reading the Bible. We're looking at our supervisors. We're looking at family members that may that we may have married into. We're looking at army buddies or military compadres that we serve with. But the scriptures take precedence over our thoughts and feelings. The Most High says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. So I'm listening to this video, to this video, <coughs> excuse me, and the author is injecting his own opinion. So there's a lot of conjecture of what he thinks, feels, and believes. Now, the interesting thing about this sermon that he preached here, it was originally preached January 16th, 1859. <coughs> now, the interesting facts about that date the Bible Destruction Group had been commissioned between 1820 and 1865. So the sermon coincides with that timeline. The Bible Destruction Group. Now, I haven't done any research on this man, Charles Spurgeon. Let's see here. Let me do a quick search. Let's go. Okay, this family. Okay, I can't read that. <clears throat> Let's do this. Nationality and ethnicity says British pastor author not much more than that okay so I'm going to go ahead and get right into it <clears throat> let's go here so in the video there's a couple of things that I noticed well there's quite a few I'm not going to play it but I will put it in the description box. Here's some things that stand out in the video. At the 704 mark going into 750, he says that Romans chapter 9 is only talking about those two men only, which is not true. Because when we read Genesis 25, it says two nations are in thy womb. So it's not just talking about two individual men. So he goes off there. Then it says at the 21 minute mark and 20 seconds, Edom is nowhere to be found. But we know that 2 Ezra 6 and 9 says, Esau is the end of the world. So he is ruling right now. The major 13 Illuminati families and really there's many families than that but the major family generations the Illuminati 
or the 13 Illuminati families. And as you can see at the 26 to 27 mark, Jacob lacked faith. That is false. And then he accused our forefather Jacob as being vile. So this man understood who the two main characters are and is. Then he says that Jacob did not wrestle with an angel, but God wrestled with Jacob. False. Let's go here. <clears throat> Excuse me. One moment. Let's do it this way. Right here. Let's go to Genesis 32 and 23. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him unto the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. So Israel is Yashra Allah. He is a prince of the power. So if he is a prince of the Most High, how is the Most High against Jacob? The Bible says that God loved Jacob. So how is he wrestling with Jacob and is against Jacob? That's a lie. And then at the 35 to 35, 24 to 35, 20 second mark, he pitied those that believe in Romans 9 and 13 because he says that it's just not fathomable or reasonable for the Most High to hate Esau. But the Bible says that he does. So we're going to go with what the Bible says. This is not about our emotions, feelings, or personal opinions. <clears throat> Let's go here. So the Most High knows the future. So his love-hate relationship between Jacob and Esau is because he's all-knowing. So he knows what the output or the productivity of these nations are going to produce. He knows their offspring because he is the creator and the potter that shaped the clay. Let's go here to the book of Psalms 10. This is why the Most High hates them. Psalms 10, <coughs> verse 3. For the wicked boasts of his heart's desire, and bless if the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. See, so he knows the mindset of the wicked, Edom. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. 
he hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. So the Most High created Edom, Esau, to be contrary to the ways of good order and discipline and of righteous judgment. So the potter has the right to despise his creation. It's no different from, and I like the analogy that Elder Apostle Aramlop used, the little kid building the sandcastle. One model, the little boy destroys, and another model he preserves and keeps as a masterpiece. But the model that he destroyed the young man is showing his might and strength to build and destroy. So the Most High knows the inner workings and the inner thoughts of the wicked that he created. Let's go to Psalms 94, verse C. So he knows the characteristics of evil doers. We got to read all this. Psalms 94 and 4. How long shall they utter and speak hard things? And all the workers of iniquity boast themselves. They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine inheritance and afflict thine heritage. So we got to understand when we read the scriptures, it's not personal. He created them and knew 70 AD would occur, knew the North Atlantic slave trade would occur, knew that 586 BC would occur when they helped the ancient Babylonians take down the Israelites, the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Read Obadiah. So he created a people and foreknew their acts, their odious deeds, their works, their bloodshed. So when we're reading the scriptures of who he loves and hates, it's based on infinite wisdom, which is unsearchable. Psalms 94 and 5. They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Did not Esau say, or the days of mourning my father are at hand, then will I slay my brother Jacob. See? So they would go around the world colonizing the earth by their blessing the sword or bloodshed. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. See, so this is what they do. So they're speaking stout or boldly against the God of the Bible, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is no fear of the Most High in their heart, which is in their mind. Psalms 94 and 7. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Understand, ye brutish among the people, and ye fools, when will ye be wise? He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? So they're taking for granted the power and the might of the omnipotent, all-powerful, all-knowing creator. Downplaying his authority and power. 
Job 21. Let's go to verse 13. They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. Therefore, they say unto God, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. So the Most High is taking into account the spiritual makeup of his creation, good versus evil. So who are we to question the maker, the creator, the potter that shaped the clay as he deemed fit? Therefore, they say unto God, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Lo, their good is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. So they don't fear the word or tremble at his commands. They don't tremble at his word. Neither do they fear his infinite glory, power, and all-knowing or omniscience. Job 27 and 12. Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. So this was their heritage, their lot to be oppressors, the wicked, the sinister side or left hand. This is their lot or their role, purpose for being created pursuant to Proverbs 16 and 4. But according to this man, it is not reasonable to believe Romans 9 and 13 in its entirety. Who's trying to lock down the earth using digital technology, global positioning, and tracking systems? Who's trying to enslave and depopulate the earth? Job 27 and 13. This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. So the Bible says, he that liveth by the sword shall die by the sword. And he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Job 27 and 15. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widow shall not weep. Though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the clay. So his widows are going to be concubines and his children servants and handmaids. So we cannot search out the vast depths of the mind of the all-knowing, all-powerful creator, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 8 and 16. When I apply my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done upon the earth. For also there is that neither day nor night seeth sleep with his eyes. Then I beheld all the work of God that a man 
cannot find out the work that is done under the sun, because though a man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. Yea, further, though a wise man think to know it, yet shall he not be able to find it. So the Most High's ways are vast, unsearchable. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. I will copy and paste the link in the description box. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Palm Yashirala in the Bible. What you got next? Lord willing. Shalom.